are currently in Muncie, Indiana at the Menatrista Center, and we're gonna go in and find out what kind of exhibits they got going on here today. So this is William B. Barnes, and he was from Arkansas, and he's an engineer. And uh, he talked about how engines ran too fast and developed a uh, three-speed transmission that improved the mileage and extended the motor life. But it also produced a quieter automobile. And this all happened in 1934. This exhibits right now, this part is about him and his overdrive engine. And uh, he uh, was an engineer for Borg Warner that's right here in Muncie, Indiana. It's no longer open. Yeah, it's no longer open. I don't know how long ago they closed down. So this exhibits about Mabel Miller who worked at the Muncie Pottery. And they got some of their pottery work here. I like this vase. I like those vases, but I love that. That lamp. That is beautiful. Oh, yeah. I love it. As you can see. They actually believe that uh, the beauty was more important than the functionality. It's beautiful. Come over here and look at some of the other stuff. Like these bookends. Looks like those are just pictures of some pottery. Vases, yeah. bowls. Over here, you got some. It's amazing, beautiful work. So here's one that he did. All right, but who is he? Marwood Downs. Speak up. Marwood Downs. All right, and what did he do? He um, was an engineer and he made stamps and he engraved silverware. He was a talented tool maker. This would be what he wore. It says oh, Downs so on it. There's some of the silverware. Oh, they're each different too. Yeah. Pretty neat. Pretty. And the designs for the silverware. Even more. And here's like, it looks like the molds. Very cool. There's more down here. This looks, I wonder if this is, I have a minute, it's the same one in the picture, so I wonder if it's actually. That could be. All right, and then there's a painting of him. That's like spot one, too. Yeah. <laughs> and this is more silverware. Sort of like a coin, kind of. Right. So this is uh, Ella Keith Woldridge, and uh, she worked for Ball, but she went on to be a bookkeeper, and she also was she was a black journalist, and she she uplifted Muncie's African American community by what she wrote. And uh, this is, she put white liners in. So as you can see, there's a white liner there in that cap, like what they're talking about. And, look at this one. Oh yeah, that's an old jar. So this is basically all on, on the ball. So that makes me wonder, you know, if this is, if Muncie's where you get the ball glass jars, was the college year Ball State actually named, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. After the glass jars. So this was a glass jar machine. It was created by Frank C. Ball. It was an improvement. It was an improvement on the... On the machine that his cousin Alma Beanham is that where, do you think that's where uh, you see the jars that say ball on them came from? Pretty impressive. Just by looking at it, I wouldn't have been able to tell you what it was. First class jar machine, FC ball, patent number 610515, 1898. I can read it. So yeah, so this is what it looks like. It looks like 
that the, they would close these and they would fill them up and form the jar and then there would be the saying on the bottom of the jar, which is kind of hard to see. There it is. There's the design. Yeah, they have multiple. Oh, it is ball right here. Ball mason jar. Oh, yeah. It does say ball. And then it has the over here, the. Oh, yeah. Stuff. Pretty interesting. I wonder if they all have the same picture. Uh, I don't know. Well, I don't know. Can yeah, you open do. up? They do. Yeah, this one's kind of closed, so we see. So it actually locks shut. It looks like it's been broke, but it's probably sat here and people's probably messed with it. That's pretty neat, pretty interesting. Would I never guess that's what this was? Would you? No. All right, now we're in an exhibit showing the, showing uh, how the kitchen was moderated, from what became modern. So, so, this is so this is for food preservation. Box, I guess. So it's like a nice chest. Reduce the amount of waste to the and leave a grateful sandwich with. That's what it looks like. Look yeah. inside. You know, look inside. Well, I would, but you can't. Okay, well. There you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You put a great big thing of ice in there, wouldn't you? And then over here, look at this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Enough about Sorry about There's a kind of a recording going on. Tell me about your day. What are you guys doing now? So, uh, we're putting some bikes together to make a seat It's a wood and coal burning stove. So, it kind of shows you. Oh, yeah. And then over here, this would be your, where you do your dishes or stuff like that, wouldn't it? Am I right? So that made everything take that much longer. And hobbling around trying to keep up, it was, it was hard for me. Plus, I've been having trouble with this old stove. I can't keep it lit, so I went out to the wood. Of course, the old table. Wood. Kitchen table. Okay. All right, so we move up. So we got a new mop. Or so this would be the next step. I want this. <laughs> I want this so bad. Now, what is this style changes with the time in America kitchens were not immune to the transition. What was 1910 grew. So is this... Now, what is what, is this actually gas now, or so so now it's a gas stove, and then obviously you can see the kitchen is becoming to look more like what we have today. So if you have the stove, oh yeah, and then the kitchen table with the radio in the middle. So this would be like around 1910, it said. And the old General Electric refrigerators, you can still find some of these. Oh, well, they didn't have, they didn't have TVs back there. My, <laughs> my grandma and grandpa had a refrigerator like this. Right. Oh, so are you saying back in 1910, they all had televisions in there when you opened up the refrigerator? Well, they didn't have that. <laughs> oh my gosh, this just reminds me of the refrigerator so much. Oh, so they put a thing so you can oh, cover yeah. up your sink and have more counter right. space. That's, I like that idea. I really like those cabinets. Oh, yeah. Spice yeah. I like that a lot. Oh, yeah. Look, cutting board. Yeah, we're pulled right on top of the drawer. Yeah. Uh, and then over here, we have an older looking kitchen cabinet. So this says it's from 1925 to 1935 is the styles here. So. Did that have a time on it? 1937. 1937. See a difference just in just a few years. So we got some more. It's like they're from all times from the early 1900s. 1936, 1935. You got flower, flower sifters and everything. And the old 
kitchen table. Look at the high chair. 1930, 1950, custom order kitchen cabinets. A flower sifter there with the glass accessories. So we just walked into another kitchen. What are we looking at, Margie? This is just like a, I don't know what you would call it. It's just like a cabinet, isn't it? Yeah, and it's just got like yeah. And then this would be like your ice box. This wouldn't be like what we just seen a little bit ago, would it? Oh no, this is like wow. That's what I'm saying. It's an ice box. It wouldn't be a plug-in refrigerator. This is where your ice would go. Oh, look, it says Frigidaire. But wouldn't your ice go down on the bottom, probably? Yeah. I... No, I meant probably down in here, wouldn't it? Oh, I don't know. Was this electric or was this an ice box? What's it say? I don't think that opens, so... No, it's got like a... I don't know. It's an ice box. Oh, so, you, so I bet I bet a big chunk of ice would go there on the bottom and keep everything cold in the top. Let's see. I believe I did 20s in the refrigerator. So it's a freezer, actually. Oh, it's a freezer. Okay. So it is electric. Okay. All right, and then we have this old sink. It says freezer here, but it says refrigerator there. Huh. Well, it's refrigeration, whether it's freezing or not, so. Nice. And Marion, it's an old stove. Is this stove. electric? It is electric. It is, an electric stove. I love this. It's an old electric stove. This looks like a newer version oh, of the cabinets we've seen that somebody may have put together. I don't know. It looks like maybe. I know. You need some shelving, I think. But this looks like it could have been like a build in a, mm -hmm. in a shop class. Okay, here's the saw oh, yeah. Well, that's it's not the saw. Well, I guess it is a table saw, isn't it? They got all different kinds in here. Kitchen cabinets. Those are just so beautiful. Yeah. Elwood, Indiana, 1920, 1930. Chiffer rugs and kitchen coverage in Kokomo, Indiana. They started building these in 1880. Hey there. I see you so, one of the new employees who just hired. Good. I hope you're a hard worker. <laughs> My name is Emmett, and I'm going to be showing you some things around here. Here's Welcome. the utility cabinet. Newcastle, Indiana, 1920, 1930. Yeah. Serving table. Yeah. Another utility cabinet. Made by an employee of Hoosier Manufacturing in Newcastle, 1910 to 1935. What's it say? It is. It's the maker's unknown. This cabinet is made by an employee. Even there's a metal tag with the company's iconic name. I don't know what that Table is. Table and chairs? It almost looks like... It almost looks like it would be somewhere to put, like... <clears throat> I don't know, certain how many drawers there are. Like utensils and... Yeah, yeah it just looks like silverware. Like, Here's another cabinet that's got the sifter. And then this. I don't think this would be kitchen. One. This is just a Wouton desk. It's made in Indianapolis and Richmond. 1874 to 1897. Wooten desk. Wooten desk, yes. So all those would push in, that would fold up, and those oh, would Oh, yeah, the whole in. thing closes, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's pretty. It's it really nice. Very pretty. And behind us, these are different sifters, aren't they? A the sugar bin, a sieve, and then that is a sifter, a flour sifter, a, a saucepan rack for the kitchen uh -huh. cabinet. There's a, are those cookie jars? That's a bread box. Look how old Yeah, I see that. Boxes. Those are both bread boxes. Oh These are cookie jars. Yeah, cookie jars. And then you have... Canisters. Yeah. Salt and pepper shakers. Oh, yeah. I remember we had we had cookie jars like this at Grandma and Grandpa's. Yeah? Yeah. I remember, I think my grandma, great-grandmother had cookie jars like that. Yeah, I bet she and we come over to look at this, and the light's completely dim, so it might be a little hard to see, but they got an old catalog here. 
I think it's Sears and Roebuck. It's a seller's catalog. Oh, just a seller's catalog. Okay. Yeah. Railroad Switchman's Lantern. There goes the lights. There's some fruit jars, insulators. The tumblers oh, for baking powder. Isn't the insulators for, uh, those are made for, uh, isn't it for, uh, for your candy? telephone pyre? Oh. Yeah. Fruit jars. Spice set, look at that. Oh, yeah. Coffee, tea, baking powder. Yeah. There's a newspaper. And here's a That's toy a Irish thing. mail car. Look, seats too. <laughs> you know, I could ride it, Margie. Uh, I don't think so. This would actually go with the first exhibit, the tail and and uh, water pump to get water from the well. All right, so that was the Minotrista Center. Uh, they have different exhibits in there all the time. And it just happened to be the uh, one for ball glass. And uh, then just different, showing how uh, kitchens became more mo modern and all the different stages and different stuff in there that was really interesting. So that's for that. Hope to catch you on the next adventure.